Hi guys, it's Diab Minigun bringing you another video series. This series is intended to be a regular occurrence and as such, it's not really a very original idea at all. There are many content creators who do similar videos, but I believe that my take on it will be unique enough to warrant its existence. Plus, I really need a continuous series that is not very complicated to create and provides you with enough content. For this video, we'll be taking a look at the MP28 for the Medic class, but of course, I would like to see your suggestions for the next video down in the comments below. I would like to mention that this video will be timestamped because I understand not everyone is interested in the history component, for example, though I will try to keep the former brief as in the history component. I will be mostly focusing on what the gun does in game. What is its strength, what is its niche, if it does have a niche, it may be a bad gun, but as far as I know there are very few weapons which are actually bad in Battlefield 5, just like with Battlefield 1 thankfully. So let's start with some brief history on what the MP28 is. If you've played Battlefield 1, you probably recognize the MP28 from somewhere. It is because that just like in real life, the MP28 is simply a slightly more advanced version of the World War I era MP18. Indeed, thanks to DICE's commitment to portraying weapons in a physically accurate manner, we can note that the MP18 has a different magazine. Why is this? This magazine is actually just as capacious as the later MP28 stick magazine. The only difference is that the MP18 originally used the Trommel magazine which was developed for the Artillery Luger. The Artillery Luger itself was simply a modification of the original Luger, usually with a longer barrel and the aforementioned high capacity Trommel magazine which held 32 rounds and was fitted into the MP18 submachine gun. This was done purely for cost reasons because the Imperial German forces simply could not afford any more resource hogs during the latter part of World War I where they were very, very starved of resources. Indeed, because of this reason, Germany or other the central powers could not have won World War I at all if you could call winning World War I a win. Anyway, the magazine was fitted to the MP18 despite its awkward ergonomics simply for cost reasons because initially the MP18 was designed by Theodore Bergman. He initially intended the weapon to feed from 20 or 30 round stick magazines which are far simpler and would not have weighed the weapon down. Keep in mind that during World War I there were other submachine gun designs which were actually in combat namely the Villar, or rather a, the offspring of the Villar Perosa, the Beretta M1918, or rather more fondly referred to as the Promatico by Battlefield 1 players. The latter weapon simply fed from the same 25 round magazine used in the Villar Perosa, with the only exception that it is a single gun fi configuration fitted in a Carcano stock. I went into this tangent just to show that there were better magazine designs and the existence of the Trommel mag on the MP18 was simply due to lack of resources. So why did I speak so much about the MP18? Well basically the MP28 does not really differ that much from the MP18. The only major difference is that it has a fire selector now and it uses a much less awkward stick magazine. In fact, the MP28 saw heavy use during the Spanish Civil War as it was copied by the Second Spanish Republic under the codename Naranjero and was chambered in the then Spanish standard 9mm Largo, which is slightly weaker around than the conventional 9x19 Parabellum. Perhaps more relevant to Battlefield 5, the MP28 served with the Waffen-SS, the German army and also the infamous Gestapo. It was also captured quite frequently by the Polish resistance, Soviet forces, British forces and even the American troops. However, the MP28 being a very old design and being very heavy despite being very well made, gave way to the much more ubiquitous and easy to make MP38 and MP40 submachine guns. Really, the MP28 did not have anything going for it that the MP40 did not do, 
And this is also the case with the Thompson submachine gun when we compare it to the M3 Greaves gun. Both the Thompson and the MP28 are simply World War I era weapons. So what about the MP28 in Battlefield 5? Being a submachine gun, it is obviously locked to the medic class. At first, you may consider it as a middle ground SMG, but there are some things that prevent it from being so. The first hint of it being a middle of the ground SMG is its fired of 670 RPM, which is very similar to Battlefield 1's Hell Regal 650, which was also a middle of the ground SMG that didn't do ever anything particularly well except multiple targets with that large magazine, but did most things well enough that it was a very popular option. In Battlefield 5, however, the MP28 starts off with a 30 round magazine and a, as I said earlier, a 670 rate of fire. As you can probably tell by the background footage, the MP28's massive strength is its quite ludicrous hip fire. The hip fire reminds me a lot of the MP18 trench, though it does lack the accuracy of the latter since the MP18 trench was a slower firing weapon and was actually, I believe, the most accurate SMG, save for the Ribay rolls, but that's more of a proto-assault rifle in Battlefield 5, or rather Battlefield 1. In Battlefield 5 it is actually an assault rifle, but we're getting off track here. The MP28 speciality, in my opinion, and the reason why it still competes with the likes of the Thompson and Suomi with their 50 round capacity, is that it can equip a 50 round magazine while also equipping both hip fire upgrades. This makes the MP28 a very, very nice room cleaner. The rate of fire of 670 paired with the hip fire advantage will give you a very competitive close range time to kill. What the MP28 does very badly though is its accuracy. In fact, for some reason, it feels far less accurate than the Thompson and even the Swomi. I think this is the fact that it has a very aggressive predictable recoil sway which is a very ironic way to name something like like that introduces a bunch of what seems to be randomness the pattern itself is not random but when you're trying to deal with the actual core weapon stats which are the horizontal and vertical recoil as well as the spread increase per shot and vertical recoil increase per shot which are all present on submachine guns it's a bit weird and I think the predictive recoil should be toned down for this weapon because it is quite inaccurate f even if you just burst fire like four rounds. Once the fourth round gets ejected the gun will go crazy and I don't think it's very fair on a weapon that has such a steep damage drop off. Yes it has a massive magazine but that shouldn't make it worse than the Thompson in terms of accuracy. If you look at the stats, the Thompson actually has the worst accuracy on paper, but like I said, the predictive recoil element, which is expressed as a predictive recoil seed, I believe, in the actual code of the game, gives it a very strange, consistent, but very jarring visual recoil pattern. Well, not visual recoil in the classic sense, just I know the horizontal recoil, but I cannot simply control it like I do most other weapons in Battlefield 5 as well as Battlefield 1. Honestly, I don't know what the point of predictive recoil is because it doesn't really feel that predictive when other components are overriding it. I'm not saying to make the predictive recoil override the other components because I do not think predictive recoil is a very skillful thing to do because it just boils down to memorizing a pattern and the problem with memorizing a pattern is that with simple mouse movements you can actually make the gun do pretty much anything you want not that that isn't skillful i just don't think it's as skillful as managing standard weapon mechanics as vertical recoil horizontal recoil and spread increase per shot where you would vary your burst length at correct distances I may be wrong about this, but it certainly feels like that, especially on the MP28. Now, if this weapon were given to any other class without access to medic's healing abilities, this may actually be quite an underpowered gun, even compared to other submachine guns with these 10, the ZK383, with both specializations really, and well, the MP34 especially, since all of those guns can actually reach out and touch people at 
further ranges because of their very soft recoil patterns or in the MP34's case it does not drop off to an 8 bullet kill which according to a friend of mine who goes by the name KHT120 I think you've seen his posts on reddit I think SMG should have their 7 they should just stop at 7 hit kill they shouldn't go to 8 hit kill I think that's a little bit ridiculous especially when you consider that the SMGs all have fairly aggressive spread increase and recoil patterns at further distances with the exception of the something like the Sten but of course the Sten pays for that with its very low damage per shot or rather its low rate of fire however if you're very skilled and proficient with using medic you should always know that you must always always close the distance how do you do this it's actually really simple one do not directly engage people that are far away with weapons such as the mp28 because you're not going to win that you will need to use smoke and you will need to use the self-healing very effectively never ever self-heal in front of an enemy because you will get your animation interrupted and it will be very awkward thankfully the latest patch introduced a yellow hit bar for the hp meter so when you are healing you can actually tell that you are healing yourself this has made medic play even more easy thankfully because i see a lot of outcry on medic weapons being underpowered I am not really convinced of this just because medics have such powerful gadgets, especially in environments as Battlefield 5 where there is very little health regeneration. In fact, other classes when they are hit and they are not close to teammates, they would need to retreat in most cases. So yes, always manage your engagement distances. Imagine you're still playing Battlefield 1's assault where they mostly had weapons that were only effective really like 20 meters maybe and they excel at 12 meters with the exception of a handful the 1900 slug or the rebarrels but this is not about battlefield one so let's forget about that but if you are capable of causing the engagement this is in battlefield one you should not have no problem doing so in battlefield 5 especially with battlefield 5's more fluid and easier movement in fact i think you've seen me do this quite a bit in the background footage where i jump all over the place and actually kill people while I ADS for example. This makes me a very hard target to hit and as such will allow me to heal up behind cover if I manage to find cover, which in most cases I do. So which maps would I recommend the MP28 mostly? Well, as you can see also from the background footage, I mostly use the MP28 on something like Fiel, on front lines or other places where it could work well is Aras, especially the central points, also on front lines. And even so on Rotterdam, but you need to be careful on Rotterdam because you can actually get stuck in a very long road that is under the bridge. And that would spell disaster, especially since there is not much cover there, unless fortifications have been built. Or that you have access to smoke grenades, which need to be managed well because they do run out. I always recommend using the smoke hand grenade for medic and also the smoke launcher because the other medic gadgets are not that useful and quite frankly if you're using AP mines you should uninstall the game right now. <laughs> so that's really all I had to say about the MP28. Treat the MP28 as a very close range room cleaner, use your medic gadgets very effectively to get the most of this weapon, be as aggressive as possible but never ever engage people who are directly shooting at you from long distances. You could get the odd cheeky kill at range, particularly if you're fighting a dumb sniper who isn't even looking at you, but I would largely avoid this because, well, you can drop down to an 8 bullet kill with a weapon that isn't at the most and you will not even get this. The 449 rate of fire that the single fire mode allows and if you fire too quickly, spread will ruin your day anyway you may also note that i didn't dive into the stats that much that is because i intend to make very short videos on the statistics of weapons just covering their raw statistics and not really talk about their niche per se i would like to present the statistics there especially since simtic has unfortunately gone down but i am using their data mine files and as such the code itself to extract these statistics 
Furthermore, if you want really good weapon reviews, I highly recommend two YouTubers by the name of Defined Disaster and also Critical Chris. I will link their YouTube channels in the description below. Please subscribe to them because they do really make quality content and offer very in-depth and insightful opinions on each weapon and they have been doing so since Battlefield 1. To close with, I am going to leave the video running because the last few clips are indicative of what the MP28 is good for. A funny thing is that this footage was actually captured pre-patch before the hipfire upgrade and the accuracy upgrade, so you could actually do much better than what you are seeing on screen right now. This has been Diamond Gun and you've been watching a new series which I do not currently have a new name for. We'll figure it out eventually. Leave a comment with your suggestions below and feedback and I'll see you on the next video. Let's <laughs> go!